Do you ever look at your model and think like, man, I wish I could just take a paintbrush and just paint on it instead of having to do all these uh, knobs and switches? Well, that's pretty much what body paint was designed for. So let's uh, let's take a look at it from the ground up. So uh, like most of the best stuff in uh, in Cinema 4D, it has its own uh, dedicated layout. So uh, let's let's check that out. So first of all, we got the um, just the regular perspective viewport, and of course that can be uh, any of your uh, orthographic views as well. But here we have just a strictly 2D UV uh, uh, viewport. So let's. Uh, 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 let's look around at some of these other things and then I'm, I'm going to show you the difference uh, of what this uh, this is. Um, here we've got a regular uh, objects panel but the difference with our material panel is here when we have a material in here we're going to see options for each of our um, whatever channels we have uh, enabled in our material you know color, luminance, uh, alpha and we can activate which of these channels we, we want to paint on. So that's a little bit different than the, the material manager we would normally be using. And then, of course, we've got a uh, dedicated color picker because we're kind of using that a little bit more when we're painting. And, uh, and over here, we've got uh, all this stuff for uh, um, uh, doing UV stuff, some automatic mapping for relaxing it. And I'll go into these things in more detail. And here are just some stock projection types. A lot of times you might not uh, really need to go in and custom uh, UV uh, make things. And then we have um, layers just like you would have in Photoshop because that's pretty much what body paint is. It's it's Photoshop with a 3D option. So, you know, if, if you're familiar with Photoshop, uh, uh, body paint is, is really going to come easily to you. And uh, brushes, here we have, uh, this is just an extension really of our uh, assets browser. And these are all these different uh, presets that we have for, uh, for body paint uh, brush presets. And uh, we have quite a few here. And then of course you can uh, take these and make your own and then save them out as your own custom, uh, custom ones. And then, of course, just a nice selection of uh, swatches. And you notice these are not all just uh, colors. Some of them are patterns. So um, Body Paint has a, a nice selection of presets. And, of course, you can, uh, you can add to those as well. All right. So uh, <clears throat> the three things that Body Paint needs uh, to work is you need to have a uh, mesh that is just a polygonal object, not just a... Um, uh, like a sphere or a cube, it has to be a polygon object, um, and then it has to have a, a bitmap to to paint on, and then uh, so uh, so yeah. So let's uh, let's do a test one. Uh, let's see where is. Uh, let me go back into our standard view just for a second, and we'll just. Let's see, a sphere. And I'm going to make this into a uh, heterohedron. I just like the, uh, the mesh layout of that. And now let's go back into our body paint layout. All right, so now here, or uh, this is a... <clears throat> Still a uh, parametric object. We've got these uh, sliders here to uh, to tell us what's going on with our mesh. So uh, let's hit C, and now this is a polygon object. And by default, it's got this uh, UV tag, which contains the default UV settings of uh, of the sphere. So let's go uh, here. We'll go show mesh. So now what we're seeing is a single. Um, uh, a single side of this. Each of these different, like, let's go back before we uh, we reduce these. I'm going to make a, a, a couple copies of these and we're going to look at them. So let's see, this first one is a hexahedron. The second one will have a standard. And this one will have some, some other way. How about hemisphere? All right, and now let's go through them one at a time. And we'll look at the different ways that the, uh, the the mapping coordinates look. So let's look at this first one. Hit C, and let's make sure we have uh, this showing. And that was our uh, our hexahedron. 
and that's the way this mapping looks. All right, let's uh, let's try this one now, and hit C. And now look at this. See, instead, see, now let's hide this first this first mesh. Now you look at th this one. It has uh, like longitudinal latitudinal lines with with them all sort of pinched up at the uh, at the north and south pole. So that's what's being represented in our uh, in our UV uh, mesh here. So the way to think of uh, our UV uh, uh, mesh as if you had clothes that you undid the seams and laid them out flat. But of course there are different ways of making seams. And so now let's. Let's look at the, our, our other one, and here, let's, uh, let's, let's make this visible. See now, and what's going on here is it looks like less uh, uh, polygons than the object really has. What's going on is each of the six facets that is making up, because the way this hexahedron sphere is made up, it's sort of like a fat cube. You know, like you see, it's got like these six sides that are sort of bulging out versus the original sphere, which is uh, kind of more set up the way a globe is. So what's going on is each of these six sides is sharing the same UV space. So on this one, if I were to draw a circle here, you would see a circle on each of these six uh, sides. Now let's look at our third one. And I'll hide the uh, the other two. Oops. That's our uh, hemisphere, and let's uh, let's turn that into a mesh. Now look what's going on. It it's not occupying the entire UV space. It's basically using that same sort of mapping type that the original sphere had with the with the poles, you know, with the sort of longitudinal pinching at the poles, but is just occupying half of the space. So, if you had a gradient, for instance, that uh, you had applied to this, you would have to keep in mind that half of this UV space was not being occupied. So, if you had a black to white gradient down here, you'd only be at 50% gray. So just keep in mind, you know, your UV coordinates and how much space they're taking up is really uh, going to determine the way your materials are going to look. So often, especially when you're painting materials, once you start painting, you're not really changing your UV layout uh, too much. All right, so now let's, uh, let's check out the wizard which is generally the way you're starting off with a, uh, <clears throat> with, a, with a project. So I'm gonna get rid of these first two guys here. And there's our original sphere. And look, see now here we have our UV tag and it's showing our uh, UV coordinates. And now these are the, uh, the different types of polygons. This is, uh, oh, let's see. Make sure I have this selected. And now here, these are just uh, uh, polygons, uh, just as if I were doing polygon modeling. See, I could even move them and sort of mess up my model if I want to. But now, notice here, I've got also a selection. But this is allowing this uh, the selection of my polygons to be the same as my UV polygon. See now when I switch over to this, I can't move this anymore, I don't see, but what I can do is I can move them in this view. And that's gonna be how I will create my texture page by arranging each of these little uh, UV islands. But also notice, see I moved this, but oh, there's there's still more here. That's these other other layers going on. So what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, delete our UV tag. And that kills all of our UV coordinates. See, this is grayed out. There's, there's nothing uh, it can show me here. Even though I can make, uh, um, uh, let's see. I can make polygon selections, but I'm not going to see anything here. Even if I go here, since I have no tag here, 
I'm not seeing anything. So rather than, oh, go in and add a tag and sort of put this whole situation together manually, the preferred method is to use the wizard. So let's, uh, let's just uh, start uh, from as simple as possible. This is our just regular object level. So, uh, all right, we've got our sphere selected and let's just hit the wizard. All right, and uh, let's just go with its uh, default settings. Say objects, sphere, checked, there we go. And <clears throat> this is gonna recalculate our, um, our, our UV coordinates. And in this case, this is what we want. And in the, to tell you the truth, either of these would be fine. And we'll go next. And now this is telling us what materials we want it to uh, uh, sl uh, create. And in this case, we're just going to create just a color channel. And now, there we go. But I don't know about this uh, sort of rectangular uh, shape. I think I'd like just a, a square um, uh, material. Something like that. previous. And uh, let's see. Rescale. Let's, let's get rid of that. Okay, let's, let's try it now. Let's go back and change our, uh, let's see. Go back and, uh, all right, well, let's, uh, let's try it a different way. Let's, uh, go and select our material. And now notice this material that's created, you haven't had to save it. It can you can just paint something on the fly. So let's go in and affect the uh, the parameters of this. Let's see. 